recently acquired a Sony Xperia 1 III and I wanted to give you my full review after using this as my main phone the last few days. Now bear with me, this is a longer video than usual, but I hope the chapters help in the description if you want to jump around. I ordered this from B&H's Photos used department online for a solid deal. As you can see, the box isn't in the best of shape, but it's not the box I'm interested in. Slicing it open, we're greeted with a device wrapped in plastic and looking fresh, which is nice, but we'll set that aside. You also get some documentation from Sony in the box as well as an included 30 watt fast charger, which charges the device very quickly in addition to the wireless and reverse wireless charging included with the Xperia 1 III. It's not only nice to see the charging brick, but of course you get the nice USB Type-C cable in the box as well. Removing the plastic and all the stickers from the back of the Xperia, the build of this I have to say is quite impressive, especially with this 21 by 9 aspect ratio. The Xperia 1 III is a lot lighter than I expected right out of the box considering the internals and the overall size of this device. However, it feels incredible in the hand. I love the matte black finish all around the phone and the button layout it features, which we'll touch on in more detail to follow. Nice to see a headphone jack there at the top as well. Removing the remaining plastic from the display, I have to note that the display looks beautiful, not even powered on, with its very minimal bezel design. At the top of the display, there's even a notification LED on this device, which I've greatly missed on devices these days. So it's really nice to see that Sony added that. But from the build standpoint, I have to say Sony did a phenomenal job here on this device. I'm really impressed with this overall build. Now, while I power this on and get this set up, let's jump right into the specification. Sony announced the Xperia 1 III back in April. However, the device actually didn't go on sale officially until August, four months following the official announcement. The Xperia has a 4K 120Hz display, but I want to note it's not always 4K and it's mostly rendered down to 1080p, not something often noted. Now out of the box it's going to be set to 60Hz, you'll have to adjust that to 120Hz if that's what you prefer, more on that to come shortly. We have the latest Snapdragon 888 chip, 12GB of RAM, 256GB of storage, Android 11, and a 4500mAh battery with both wireless and reverse wireless charging on board. Cameras, we have a quad 12 megapixel setup with a wide telephoto and ultra wide lens. We can also record video in 4K up to 120 frames per second. Overall, some pretty impressive specs on the Sony Xperia 1 III. I'm very impressed overall with what Sony was able to deliver in this form factor. Again, this is a pretty light device in hand, so I'm pretty impressed overall with this build as well as the specs that are inside. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below on the specifications on this Sony device. Now that we have the Sony Xperia 1 III booted up and we have it completely set up right out of the box, I want to jump into a few settings. So as I mentioned on the high refresh rate on the display, so that is going to be a toggle in the settings. So you're going to have to change it from 60 Hertz to use the actual high refresh of 120 Hertz. It is 120 Hertz all the time. It's not variable. So it's going to be a set 120 Hertz. And as you can see, it's very fast, very fluid navigating throughout the display here on the Sony Xperia 1 III. No issues whatsoever. No hiccups, no stutter, no lag. As you can see, it's a very smooth display, very smooth experience navigating throughout the UI. No problems at all. It's a very fast performing phone. I'm pretty impressed overall just navigating throughout you know, YouTube and other applications quickly backing in and out of those applications, scrolling through my app drawer, etc. You're going to have no issues with that display and I think you're going to be pretty impressed with 120 hertz overall. So I highly recommend toggling that setting right out of the box if you pick up this device. Go for that high refresh rate. Why not? It looks incredible. Another feature that's pretty awesome is the multi-window ability on the Sony Xperia. So you're able to have multiple windows here. You can have dual windows set up so you can use two apps at once. So I'm going to go ahead and show you YouTube and Chrome here. YouTube at the top, Chrome there at the bottom, and you can adjust these however you like. You can also select other applications. You don't have to use just the default standard ones that are out of the box. It's just really nice to use and it gives you that multitasking functionality right out of the box and it's simple and easy to use. I also want to mention I love having this notification LED on this device again just wanted to point out again that that exists here on the Sony Xperia. The button layout is pretty interesting so you have your volume rockers, you have your power button which is also your fingerprint reader and a dedicated button for your Google Assistant as well as a camera shutter button. So we're going to go ahead and take a look here real quick just at what it offers. So again you have a dedicated Google Assistant button which is really nice but then you also have this dedicated shutter button which is even better on the camera application. 
you hold the focus and then when you actually push down it will actually snap and take the photo and it takes well pretty solid photo which we'll get to the cameras here shortly but just wanted to show that feature with that dedicated button now, similar to Samsung UI, you also have this side sense function here, so you can actually select applications there from that side panel. Now, while the Sony Xperia lasts me an entire day with about six to eight hours of on-screen time with heavy performance and usage, I am impressed to see that 30 watt fast charging via that USB type C charging brick that comes in the box. It's really nice to see wireless charging as well as reverse wireless charging as an option as well on this device. So it's a pretty versatile option in terms of charging when you do need to charge, but it will last you an entire day, no issues. Well, you also get expandable storage as well as dual SIM support in the SIM tray. But you also have a SIM tray that you don't need a SIM ejector tool to open. It's really awesome. There's a little slot there. You stick your nail in there and you can easily open the SIM tray, which is really cool to see on this device. Now this thing is feature packed and there's some weird features in there as well, like this dynamic vibration, which if you turn this on as you're watching a video, as you can see, I'm watching an MKBHD video there at the bottom. The sound will also cause the haptics in the device to actually vibrate. So there's a lot of weird settings like this that I actually toggle off. This isn't on by default, but I just wanted to note there's a lot of other features that are pretty cool if you're interested. This thing is very feature packed and I like that while it's feature packed, you still get that stock Android experience on this device and there's really no bloat overall on the actual phone. Now you can't uninstall applications like Facebook or Netflix that come pre-installed, but having all these applications in a stock Android-like experience is pretty awesome to see. For me personally, I prefer this type of experience versus like Samsung's One UI. Just me personally, I like stock Android and having these features just kind of buried in stock Android is a lot nicer than having them thrown in your face. Now watching content on this device, of course, is immersive and it's so crisp and it looks so good whether you're watching Netflix or YouTube whatever you're watching on this device it's gonna look really nice especially not having any bezels on this device having that 120 Hertz display as well as that 4k when it is rendered in 4k now let's talk about camera so jumping right into the front-facing camera you, I want to note a few things here it's not the best so starting off with a quick selfie shot that I took this is in pretty low light it's been raining all week so Mind you, with all these photos that I have with my photo comparisons, it's been raining, so the lighting's not the best. But as you can see here, just a standard shot with the window open, no other light in the room. And you could kind of tell it's not the greatest. It also kind of applies this beauty effect by default. There's no toggling that off or anything. And you're going to notice this in a lot of the different photos when you take selfies. But if you add additional light, you can get a solid photo. So adding more light, the photo looks more bright, more vibrant. But again, it applies this weird beauty effect that I'm not a huge fan of on the camera. So me personally, I'm not a huge fan of the selfie camera on the Sony Xperia One 3. And if you're someone who takes a lot of selfie photos, this is definitely not going to be the phone for you. The focus on this camera setup is going to be on the rear cameras, not the front facing camera setup. So again, I don't think really anybody's going to be that impressed with the front facing cameras on here. It does get the job done. And if you have the right lighting, it's going to look a whole lot better. But if you're in a low light scenario, or maybe you're at a restaurant or you're out somewhere in public at night, it's not going to be the best photo using the selfie cameras that are included on this device. Now jumping right into the rear cameras, however, that's where the entire story changes. So you get a lot of control of the photos and the photography with this device. Now, some of these photos aren't going to be the best. I've been playing around with the controls and everything that you get outside of just the basic and auto modes, but I have to say I'm still really impressed with the camera setup, the rear camera setup, at least on the back of the Sony Xperia One 3. I have to recommend, you know, taking the time to learn all of the you know, nuances of their camera pro application that Sony provides on the actual device. But I have to say it works really well. And I'm really impressed with some of these photos that I took it, considering, you know, it poor lighting, it was raining, it wasn't the greatest weather. And overall, I'm just pretty impressed with that. And then filming video has been incredible. I really like the Cinema Pro app that Sony provides on the device as well, getting really clear shots in 4K, being able to adjust all of your frames. Just, I mean, the settings alone are really impressive, but the footage also looks pretty good as well. 
still in low light, not in the best light. I, you know, I think overall it turned out quite well for some of this footage playing around with the actual Cinema Pro application. Let me know your thoughts though in the comments down below as far as these photos and some of these quick video clips that I took just playing around with these camera applications. Now, what I did find very interesting, you know, similar to a lot of devices right now, we keep hearing about all these overheating warnings. Now, I didn't get this warning while filming. Sony proactively provides you with a warning that if the temperature gets too high when using their Cinema Pro application and filming, especially at high resolutions with their 4K capabilities, that the device might actually become pretty hot and it warns you, you know, you might burn yourself. Again, I didn't have any of these issues. Uh, there's a lot of devices out there like the Pixel 5a, for example, that reactively gives you this warning even though the, the device actually isn't getting hot so for me take this with a kind of a grain of salt i didn't experience any issues filming all day no issues whatsoever with this now jumping into the cinema pro application as i mentioned you get a lot of control of your video and your photography if you jump into the camera pro app but here we have the cinema pro application that sony provides right on the device and it's the stock video application on the phone. And I have to say it works really well. It's very fast, it's very fluid. It's also pretty intuitive jumping into it. I'm pretty new to all of these camera settings. All of my videos are typically filmed on an iPhone or another uh, Android device using the cameras with the devices I have around me. This very video I have to note is actually being filmed right now uh, using an iPhone 10 since that's the only other device I kind of had near me that was fully charged and ready to film a video for this one. Um, but jumping back into this, the Cinema Pro application, having all of this customization right at your fingertips is a pretty cool experience when filming. As you can see here, making dinner, I was just playing around with the application just to kind of get a feel for it. Multitasking here at its best. Um, but overall, it's been a lot of fun jumping right into this application, trying to film different things, playing around with the different camera settings, playing around with the lenses, the ISO, the shutter all of the options here, it's been pretty cool to just test out and play around with the color accuracy. Everything is very true to life with this device. That's another thing that I really wanna note. So whether you're taking photos or you're filming video, you're gonna get a very true to life experience with the camera setup on this device. All of the color accuracy is very impressive on the Sony Xperia 1 III. Sony definitely delivered on this phone. Here's another quick video clip that I shot just playing around again with the Cinema Pro application at night. Very low light, just candlelight. And overall, I'm pretty impressed. I think it looks really good overall. And being able to just adjust everything on the fly with the Cinema Pro application really gives you a solid shot in the end. And I think a lot of people will be really impressed playing around with this, especially if you're, you know, a pro out there with cameras. I think you're really gonna enjoy the setup on this device. And if you're already in the Sony ecosystem with your cameras especially, I think you're gonna be pretty impressed with what Sony has been able to do on the Sony Xperia 1 III. It's just pretty crazy to see not just the overall impressive outcomes of photos and video from the rear camera setup on here, but to see the level again of the versatility you get within the applications that Sony provides, whether it's the Camera Pro or the Cinema Pro applications, they both will serve you well here. Gaming on the Sony Xperia 1 III is a breeze. This thing is a performance beast with that Snapdragon 888 chipset, as well as that 12 GB of RAM, being able to play games like Call of Duty, Fortnite, PUBG, etc., has been very fast, very fluid. Playing Call of Duty here, you can see it's very smooth, no dropped frames, no lag, no stutters at all whatsoever. And it's just really fun to play games on this device, especially considering you have that aspect ratio, but then there's no bezels on this device. So the overall experience is really nice. Uh, I, I've really enjoyed playing a lot of different games on here. Now, Call of Duty also comes with some Call of Duty points with the Sony Xperia, which is an added bonus if you're a huge fan of Call of Duty. This comes actually pre-installed, as well as the next game we're gonna talk about here in a second. Um, but you do get some added points and bonuses with Call of Duty if you pick up the Sony Xperia. Usually I'm not a fan of pre-installed games, but it's cool to see that you're getting an added bonus along with that pre-installed bloat. Again, another pre-installed application, Asphalt 9. Very fast, very fluid. I played a few different rounds of races here and it looks very crisp. I really like the display again on here. And not only that, the sound that comes out of this device is very impressive. The overall 
uh, dual speaker setup, everything just sounds so good, especially in games. You're getting a very immersive experience, whether you're, again, watching content, you're making content, or you're playing games like Asphalt 9 here or Call of Duty. It's going to be a phenomenal experience, so I think you'll really enjoy this phone for gaming as well. Now to wrap this up, I want to say I am very impressed with the Sony Xperia 1 III. This has to be one of my favorite Android devices in a very long time. I'm just so impressed with everything it offers. And when it comes to the price, this retails for $12.99. You can find some better deals out there on this device. But I have to note, for that 256 gigabyte storage option, if you compare it to other devices out there, it's really in the same price point at that retail value price. I mean, $12.49 for the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra 5G for the same 256 gigabytes of storage. If you are gonna pre-order the new iPhones, it's gonna be in the same price range, over $1,000 for either the Pro or the Pro Max in that 256 gigabyte storage option. So whether you're buying that Galaxy phone or you're buying the new iPhone, or you know what, even if we take it a step further and we say, all right, maybe you're gonna to go to OnePlus or another manufacturer and buy a device. All of these devices are well over $1,000, but they don't offer the same feature set that we're seeing here on the Sony Xperia 1 III. Overall, I am incredibly impressed. I think this is a very underrated device that a lot of people, you know, just pass up on. I think if Sony marketed these a little bit better, you know, they're kind of running in that same LG territory lately. Uh, it's just uh, crazy how impressive this device is and how underrated it is. It doesn't get enough attention, I think, for what it is. It's really impressive. I highly recommend checking out this device if you're interested. Let me know if your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you. Take care and stay safe.